Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we are going to tell you why you should be afraid of me and also give you tips on writing and on how to decipher through YouTube writing tips. Seems like a lot to cover in a short amount of time, but we're gonna see how we're gonna do this. We're gonna do our best here. The reason why we're doing this video today is that Bookish did a great video, um, I guess he put it up this morning, called Beware of, oh shit, I already fucked this up. Something like Beware of BookTube Writer Advice. I will have it up here for you to go watch. Um, it's a good video. And um, he had some good tips, so I want to talk about what those tips were and kind of give my takes on them. So here we go. Let, let, let's see what we have here. So the first thing he said that really got me and the reason why he did the video in the first place, I think, is because he saw like an infographic or something like that or just something on um, social media that said 81% of people out there want to write a book, but only 3% of those people actually write their book. That sucks. As someone like me, to hear a number like that, that like just breaks my heart. I'm a huge proponent of people chasing their dreams no matter what they are. And when I hear that that many people out of any kind of group don't do the thing that they dream of doing, it just makes me sad because there's usually reasons why people don't follow their dreams. And a lot of those reasons are going to be things along the lines of fear, things along the lines of insecurities, or worse among all of these, um, people not believing in them and helping them achieve those things. And then finally, you have people thinking that they can't do it because of other responsibilities that they have that um, kind of swallow them up. And I do understand that. Um, but anyone who's been watching this channel for any length of time knows that I think that is something that's actually workable. You could work around that if you put your mind to it. So anyway, that just really struck a nerve with me. So I appreciate Brian making his video. Wanted to kind of give my two cents in here too. Another thing Brian said that I agree with is any of you watching this video right now, if you want to write, you can write. You know how to do it already. You don't need to watch this channel. You don't need to watch hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos on how to do something. Best way to start doing something is to actually start doing something. And then you can fuck around and play with shit later to find out like what you're doing wrong or what you're doing right. So let me give you an example here. I used to listen to this podcast called Writing Excuses. I don't think they do it anymore. They might, I don't fucking know. One of the greatest things about that podcast was that the episodes were like 20 minutes long. They were really quick because they didn't want to take away from you writing because they understood that when you're taking time out to listen to that podcast, that was probably time that you could have been writing. And that probably falls into your writing time. So they're like, we're going to do a really short podcast so you can get back to writing. Okay. So I appreciated that. The thing that I didn't appreciate was that these people were on the show and they were constantly talking about things you should do, things you shouldn't do. It was more about the craft than anything else. And so I would listen to these podcasts and get all this information and then I would go to write and then I would constantly be second guessing everything I did because I'm like, oh shit, is this what they were talking about on that one? Oh fuck, shit. Ooh. And then I wasn't getting anything done. So... If watching this channel makes you second guess yourself, I'll take the hit. Stop watching this channel and just start fucking writing. Start fucking writing your book. Start writing short stories. Start writing poetry. Write whatever you need to fucking write. But if anything I say keeps you from doing it, if anything I say makes you second guess yourself, stop watching this. 
stop watching any fucking YouTube channel or listening to podcasts or anything like that that makes you think while you're typing. You're like sitting there going, then you're like, oh shit. If you're ever having that, what you're listening to is not helpful. It is keeping you from doing the thing. Okay. And we're going to talk a little bit later about drafts and editing and stuff like that, but not, not yet because some other shit's going to come up. Word count. This is something Brian talked about. Like people who, and he blamed NaNoWriMo for this. And I will agree with him that NaNoWriMo made people think that word count is the most important thing in the world. But the reason why NaNoWriMo did that was because there were a lot of writing gurus and self-publishing gurus who would say things like, if you're not writing 3,000 words a day, you're fucking up. Or if you're not writing 6,000 words a day, you're fucking up. There is something to be said about being able to track your progress with your word count. Like, you know that, and another reason why word count is important is because most places you're going to submit your work to are going to ask for specific word counts. So if you have a novel that you're going to send to an agent, an agent's not going to want to even look at anything unless, depending on the genre, unless it's like 70,000 words to 120,000 words. So if your novel is not at 70,000 words, like you fucked up. Like you got to figure out a way to make whatever novel you're writing fit into the specific parameters of what that genre wants you to have. So like if you're writing epic fantasy and your book is not 120,000 words, you fucked up. Like certain places want certain word counts. So I think that's where a lot of the idea of doing word counts come in. The other thing is people who are self-published authors know that the way you make money as a self-published author and the way you make Amazon work for you is to constantly be putting stuff up on Amazon. So the only way you can continue to grow your author business is to have word counts that you could hit so you know every month or every two months you're going to have a new book out. So with that said, having a word count goal is important, but, 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 but if your word count goal is making you not write and making you discouraged. So say you say, I'm going to write 3,000 words every day. The first day you write 3,000 words. The second day you write 4,500 words. Day three comes around and you write 600 suddenly the wind is out of your sails and you feel like shit. And then you're like, oh, if that is what's happening, do not do word count goals. You are not set up to do word count goals. Some people work great on deadlines and can really like put their shit forward because of that. But not everyone can do that. There is no, like, this is the exact way to do something. Everybody's different. So if you're not that person, don't beat yourself up for not being that person. Figure out what works for you. And if checking your word count every day just, like, stresses you out, then don't fucking do that. Just go, you know what? I'm going to write a chapter this week. I don't care how fucking long it is. Do that. If that stresses you out, just don't do anything and just fucking type. Who fucking cares? Like after, I don't know, three, six months, go back and look and see what the fuck you have and go, oh, this is a nice novella here. Who fucking cares? Do whatever works for you and whatever works for you has to make you feel good when you're doing it and feel like you're accomplishing something. If anything you're doing feels like a pain and doesn't make you feel good, don't fucking do it. Like there's way too many things in life that already make us feel like shit. If you guys have a job that you go to every day that you fucking hate, why fucking turn your art into something that's making you feel the same way? Art should be fun. Art should be a release. Art should be fucking cathartic. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, if your art is making you fucking crazy and making you just, like, a shitty person to be around, you're doing it wrong. Go back and think about what makes you feel good to create and then start from there and grow. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's my beef about word counts. Some of you love word counts. And if that works, fucking do it. Most of the time when I was writing fiction, it worked for me. And it worked for me best when I already had a release date for the book I was writing. So if I already had a date set up and I knew not only did this book have to be done, but it had to be proofread, the artwork had to be done and all this shit by this day, because that's the day it's going out, word counts worked good for me. When I didn't have that like fucking sword of Damocles hanging above my head and shit, word counts did not help me at all. It like really fucking annoyed me. So there's that. And fuck NaNoWriMo. Let me just throw that out. Oh, here, here's another thing um, Brian said, and he's 100% accurate. You don't need anything to write, okay? Like, you do not need a computer. You do not need fancy software. You do not need a free write. You do not need um, quill and ink, you know? Like, you don't need a special coffee or a special tea or a special mug, like Brian said. You don't need to have a perfect office with a nice view. You don't need to have complete solace and serenity. You can write with anything whenever you want. And I did a video a while back and I'm like, well, every time you take a shit, open your notepad on your phone and start writing a fucking book. And like, if that bothers you, you're like, well, that's when I scroll on Instagram. Fuck you. Write your fucking book if you want to write a book. Okay. So like, you don't need anything fancy to fucking do anything all you need to do is actually do the thing that's all you fucking need okay and then these are the seven tips brian had in his video and again i'm not trying to just like rehash brian's video go watch brian's video it's great but i do want to talk a little bit about this stuff because like all things like everybody's different and everyone's going to do shit a different way. So Brian's number one uh, tip for writing is every number one tip you will find in every writing book in the world. And for some reason, this is still something people have to hear. Okay. And it it's, it's just priority one. In order to write, you have to actually fucking write. You have to sit down, start typing. If you like to stand up, then do it standing up. But you're never going to finish that book that you've always wanted to write if you never actually write. So take time, figure out when you can do that, and fucking type or write freehand. Do whatever the fuck it is you have to do. The more you do something, the better you get at it, right? Isn't that what people say? So you definitely have to do that. Um, the second thing he said was read. And um, he added a caveat, and I don't even know if he realized he did this, but this is what I agree with the most here. Read stuff that you want to write like. What I think a lot of people do when they hear the advice, oh, you got to read more if you want to write more. And then what happens is people end up reading everything under the sun that they were told is a great piece of fiction or a great piece of literature or a great piece of whatever. Some of you might not like those books and you're reading a book that you don't fucking like and it just sucks and it makes you feel like, oh God, I don't want to fucking do this. And if the act of reading or even the act of writing, you ever feel like, ugh, you're going to not want to continue doing that. So definitely read stuff that you like. Read stuff that speaks to you. Read stuff that you like the flow on the page. Not that you're going to copy this, but you're learning technique. You know what I'm saying? So if there's a writer out there that you really love the way they put stuff on paper, go read every fucking book that person did so you can actually see the structure, okay? 
And then what you might want to do at that point is find out who that author loves, who inspired that author, and then go and look at that writer's stuff and see if you can see where writer A took these cues from writer B or the other way around, whatever, it doesn't matter. You guys know what I'm saying. That's really a good way to understand structure and understand form in the sense of how something looks and how something flows. Okay. So definitely do that. And then the, he did three things that he learned from other writers. One was, I think from Hemingway and it was, don't write until you run out of ideas, write until you still have an idea in your head so you know where you're going to pick up the next day. This is this was a weird one for me because when I write novels, I guess it's called planting because like I'll write like an outline beforehand of how many chapters my book is going to have and like either the title of the chapter or what the chapter is going to be about, whose point of view it's going to be, and then what has to be achieved in that chapter. And then when I go to write that chapter, I pants and I just like, I, I know what I need to achieve. So I'm just like, -da 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 -da. I'm just writing time, 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 time. So I always know what my next thing's going to be. But I guess if you are completely pantsing and you don't outline at all, making sure you have the idea of what you'll work on tomorrow by the time you're done writing is probably a really good idea. The next one, I can't remember who we said said it. It was whoever wrote, I think the river runs through it. I don't know. He had a great quote in there, but it was about um, being thrifty with your writing. I think that's what he said. And I believe this kind of in a different way. What I like to do is, I guess it's kind of like Bukowski-ish. Because Bukowski will talk about try to say something in the simplest way possible or whatever and if that's helpful to you then do it like that the way I look at it is and it's so funny because I'm using like mathematical words here and I fucking suck at math and I also suck at fractions which is even funnier that I'm using this this way but my thing is always to reduce everything down to the lowest common denominator simplify your fractions okay so if especially when i'm writing poetry if i said something and i said this on that um podcast episode i did with uh, matthew buckley smith the other like when i put that up a little while ago i said if i wrote a line that said i walked across the room to the table i would then change that line later to at the table because walking across the room doesn't do anything for anything it doesn't move the story forward you in your head you're like well yeah it is because you're moving from one side of the room to the other yeah but like why was i on the other side of the room anyway like that's stupid if like the whole thing takes place at the table i should be at the table like simplify simplify reduce 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 there's no need to and that's just me this is like a me writing tip now. Always make things easier to digest. And a lot of you who fancy yourselves fancy people and well to do with the knowledge of literature, like that's a horrible idea. You have to paint a picture. Paint the picture. I don't fucking care. I don't care if you use 100 paints or if you have a marker make the picture. I don't give a shit. Okay. Um, but again, that's my bad writing advice. Another thing he talked about was, I think he said Elmore Leonard talked about dialogue tags where he said only use said and asked. So like something, something he said, something, something he asked. I've been told different things on this. I've been told don't even to use asked. Even if you're asking a question, say he said, I always thought that looked weird. I think, was that Stephen King who said that? I don't fucking know. A lot of people don't like using like adverbs. 
they think it looks sloppy and as brian said it's putting like way too much weight on a dialogue tag that should be put into the body of the work so instead of saying like he said quickly or he gasped is the one he used but adverbs to me is like another thing to go on with this but it's like instead of saying so using brian's analogy or brian's example like, if he went, like, holy shit, he gasped. You don't even know he's gasping until, the like, after you read the thing, okay? So the better thing to do would be she came around the corner, seeing her out of the corner of his eye, he jumped. But corner of your eye, that's another fucking weird thing to say. He left his feet and skin turned white. Um, cold sweat dripped down his face and his wiener went up into his abdomen and then he says, oh my gosh, or something like that. I don't know. That was a horrible way of doing that. But you guys see what I'm saying. It's It goes back to like show, don't tell. You know, like paint the picture. Don't tell people what they're supposed to see. That kind of shit. And then he had something that I 100% agree with. This is so important. Listen to your work. If you have anything, like I have to do it. Um, a little differently like I can't remember how he said he does it but like I um, select all like um, command a and then go into the um, text to speech thing on my computer and hit play and it will read back my work to me and even though it's like a fucking robot voice when you hear your words coming at you like, you'll notice all these mistakes you made. You will go, oh, shit, that's not how that's supposed to go. But when you read, your mind, your your brain thinks you're stupid. And your brain is trying to help you get through the day. Okay? So when you see words, like when you're reading lines, lines that you've written, and some of them are wrong, like some of the words are wrong, they're spelt wrong, words are missing your brain will fix that because it thinks it's trying to help you it thinks it's doing the right thing so you will read something a hundred times and think it's perfect and then someone else looks at it and they're like oh you fucked up here like how do you spell of f-o idiot you know shit like that so when you play it back and have audio of your work being read to you, you will find so many mistakes. So definitely, definitely, definitely do that. That is a huge thing. Even when you read out loud your work, you will find more mistakes doing that than you would if you're just like eyes are going over it. So I highly fucking recommend doing that. Um, and then he said this thing about beta readers. Beta readers are great if you have them and if you are not on a time crunch. And what he said, which I thought was pretty clever, was don't ever send your beta readers anything unless it's at least the second draft. Don't ever send beta readers a first draft and maybe do a bunch of drafts before you send anything to your beta readers. And I think this is good advice if this is how you write. I am one of those people who tend to not ever do second drafts, like other than like a proofreading. I know that that is technically bad, but my logic behind this is, is if we are good at doing this, we should just be able to do it. Giving yourself a first draft is just like you telling yourself, well, it's okay to fuck up because you could just write it again later. Like you would never tell your heart surgeon, hey, I know I'm about to die right now, but if you fuck up this time, it's fine. Just like, you know, I'll, I'll let you know if there were any mistakes and then you could go back and do it again. And I don't know why the arts, especially arts that like people go to school for and get like doctorates in, that it's okay to 
not do it right the first time. And I know this sounds weird. And a lot of you were like going, this is horrible advice. Do not listen to this guy. But I'm just like thinking like if you're good at what you do and you trust yourself, just tell yourself, hey, I'm just going to do it right this time and it's going to save a shit ton of time. So I'm just going to I'm just going to do this right this time. And that's fine. And for a lot of you, that might work. But maybe for even more of you, that's horrible advice. So if that doesn't work for you, don't fucking do it. Don't listen to me. It's fine. It's just something that, like, I would just rather, I would rather do a pretty fucking good job the first time and make more shit than agonize over, like, one thing I make and have that take up, like, a year of my life. That's just me. Because, I mean, shit, like, I'm who am I trying to kid? Like, I'm not, like, hiding from anybody. It's like, why write something over and over and over and over and over again if I mean I don't know I don't want to say that makes you a fraud if you know how to do something just do it right the first time like how many times can you fry the same egg you know and like some people are like oh you can't compare art to like other shit why not like, if you already know the rules on how to do something, then just follow those rules the first time you do it. Done. Now you can do something else. I don't know why this is so fucking confusing and hard for people. But again, I'm not telling people that they have to fucking do shit like that. That's just how I like to do it. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to say about Brian's video, and I'm sure he wasn't like picking on me or anything like that, but he was saying like all these people who have these like writing tip videos and stuff, blah, 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 do this because they're trying to sell you like their books. They're, they're building their audience. So make sure you understand that most people when they like, go, Hey, I'm here to help you. But yeah, by the way, buy my book that that's how most people are great. I want you to buy my book too. Like, what the fuck is happening? It's out now at my Etsy shop. Links down below. Here's the thing. I was doing BookTube on here way before I was giving like writing tips and shit. I was writing books way before I even had a YouTube channel. And I've always been hawking my shit. And people kept asking me questions over and over and over again. So I started making writing tip videos and then that took over my channel because that's what people wanted to know. So here we are. Um, do I care if you guys think the only reason why I make these videos is to hawk my books out now at my Etsy shop? And you could also go over to Amazon and get my novels and short stories and poetry collections too. I don't fucking care. If you like my shit, buy my shit. If you don't, suck a dick. Write your own fucking book. I don't give a shit. I hope this is helpful, though. I hope you like these videos. But hey, if you like me and you like my writing, or you don't even know if you like my writing yet, try some of it. In fact, if you go to my website, IHateMountWall.com, you can get a free ebook full of poems and short stories. And if you haven't got that yet, what the fuck's wrong with you? It's free, you fuck. I'm not trying to fuck you here. Just do the fucking thing. So it's cool. But yeah, there's other people who maybe try to grift in more um, sneaky, shady ways, you know? But fuck it. Everyone's kind of in shit for some fucking reason. So I don't know. Like maybe we need to make the exchange of ideas a little more out in the open hopefully this is okay and like you guys aren't offended that i'm selling you books i don't think brian was talking about me but um maybe that was me thinking a little too highly of myself maybe he was talking about me brian you don't have to comment below this to tell me if you were talking about me or not it's okay it's okay but like no i've i've seen people give ridiculous advice on youtube and then try to sell their book or try to sell their course. And one of the reasons why like, I'm kind of dragging my feet on my how to write 
poetry book is because I don't want to come off as that guy who, hey, I've written all these books, but they don't sell very good. So now I'm going to sell this book on how to do what I do because this will sell really well. I don't want that. I don't want to come off like that kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? That freaks me out. But I know that's just me getting in my own way and I should just shut the fuck up and put out the goddamn book on how to write poetry. <sighs> or at least how I write poetry for fuck's sake. Because most poets will tell you I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But hey, if I could entertain a couple of you here and there, my, my job's done. All I'm supposed to do is ejaculate the words and then you guys could decide if you want to swallow or not. Okay? So, with that said, keep buying my books! Okay? Tie part, everybody. Um, that should probably be the only advice you ever need to listen to. Here. Tie part. That's the one thing I'm going to tell you guys. Type hard. This is all the advice you need. Type hard. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.